Hi everybody, my name is Grzegorz Zugosz and in this video we are not meeting from the field but at my computer that, and here I will show you my editing process. Many of you asked about it, how it's going and stuff like that. So we'll go through start to the finish on four different pictures that I took on my trip to Iceland. You can see the behind the scenes of those pictures in the card above. So let's start with importing the photos. We, we go to the library model, add folder. I have them saved in one of the folders. I've got them cataloged by, um, by the location, then by the year. That's the folder that we're gonna post process. I'm gonna post process those for, for pictures and import. Okay, and now we're heading into the develop model. First, let's look at this redneck furlough. Overall, an okay image straight from the camera, but the greens are not green. There is a bit overexposure here in the whites. And we would like to be a bit closer. So because I'm using the R5, I have a lot of pixels to use. So I will crop, crop it probably like this. That will be my final crop. And I will start with the global adjustments. I will try not to blow the highlights. So I'm clicking on the button in the top right. Uh, because if I would blow the highlights, the red spots will start to appear. First, I will add just a bit of contrast. Then, what I usually do is I play with the um, sliders to see what works the best. Definitely we want less highlights in this image because you can see this area is pretty blown out. We won't add whites, but we may take blacks a bit down, add a bit of vibrance and just a tiny bit of saturation. And that's a good image from the basic editing. Maybe just a bit of less blue on the bird and a bit more orange. Now we're going to uh, specific editing, specific parts of the image. So we're selecting adjustment brush here and let's start with the eye. It's pretty well visible but we just want to give it this a bit kick with adding a bit of white clarity and just a tiny bit of exposure to make that up that I really pop at us. So second one this really bothers me so I will just clone it out in Lightroom because it's easy fix for, for the Lightroom. Um, but maybe not from here where it's, it's suggest, just from the area nearby. Done. Second of all, we'll do the overall bird adjustment, which means bringing just a bit of sharpness. I'm pressing an O button to uh, see um, where is my selection. I'm selecting the bird. Okay, now, now that we have a better selections, what I usually do is I bump up the textures just a tiny bit and I add a bit of clarity to the bird. Here I will take a bit out of the shadows recover a bit of shadows and maybe just maybe take a bit of highlights off but add a bit no we won't add whites maybe a bit of blacks to to make it stand out from the background okay now it's time to deal with the overexposed water here and here and simple fix another brush adjustment And it will be highlights all the way down and blacks, I mean, and 
uh, why it's pretty significantly down also. Now I'm pressing ALT and deleting just a bit of the mask that I went too far off. And that's that. I went a bit too much here, so I need to recover just a bit of whites more. And now this part, um, it's also overexposed, so let's... Now as you can see it's overexposed and we are taking the highlights down as well as taking the whites down. And now we're masking it again. Just like this, easy as that. And just a bit less. Okay. Now you can see um, what the adjustment that we added did. So this is the image without specific adjustments. And this is with them. So we want to make them stay. And the thing that I usually do with my bird portraits is um, I adjust a bit of uh, vignette ju just to make your eye really focus on the, on the bird. And now I see that, um, that I need to um, focus more here and just a bit of shadows recovery. Uh, maybe a bit of to make your eye go straight to the head because that's what the most important part of the bird now it's good it was taken in the ISO um, 1600 which means uh, it's a bit too noisy for my right liking as we can see from the R5 so I will use a plugin that I have bought that I highly recommend from you and there is a link down below that if you buy the product I get a bit of commission so if you like what you see here uh, you can uh, use it yourself uh, and it's basically an AI editing tool that uh, does uh, the best job noise reduction wise from what I found here I don't need to tweak it, maybe a bit less of the noise reduction, we will see what that does, okay that's perfect. We just click apply and easy as that, mm. our image is, mm, is noise free. Okay so just for the sake of it, I will show you the before and after. That's the before and after, I think it's pretty significant difference between the first one and the, the second one. So moving on to the second image, something less typical, which is going to be the, mm, this oyster catcher and a car showing the environment that those birds live on Iceland, which is pretty neat. Okay, first of all, we need to fix the horizon and crop it just a bit to make the composition more balanced so that's what i will go here i think no just like this uh, first of all again uh, highlights down to get the details back mm, shadows up to get the details in the details in the car and in the bird um, Contr will increase the contrast of the scene just because it looks nice nicer again vibrance and saturation I would usually remove uh, the saturation from just this part you can see here this yellow sign but because I want this image to be like this uh, urban style photograph I'm gonna leave it uh, just to use this image more like a journalistic type of image, not a pretty portrait as the father wrote just before. Um, so this image will take a bit less editing. Um, we'll start with uh, blurring out a bit of this foreground because it's a bit too much in focus for me. So we'll decrease the clarity here by about 50%. I don't want to go too much 
because it will look fake so I will go something probably about 50 plus minus I never go like I see some other photographers shooting oh it has to be minus 5 or minus 10 it can't be minus 7 or minus 8 I don't care I do adjustment as my eye feels like that's basically how I do it um, I'm gonna try a 16 by 9 crop here because I believe it might work a bit better with less of the sky and I like this version of the picture more so I'm gonna stay with that and uh, now we're gonna focus on the bird as you can see we lost a bit of blacks so we need to bring them back again with the brush tool um, I'm just painting in here and how am I doing that? I'm not using the blacks because that will make the blacks to lose all the details inside of them. I'm taking all the whites, uh, not all the whites, some whites and some um, highlights of the parts that are too bright for my liking. And now I will take uh, the whole bird, do my usual sharpness thing, uh, which is uh, just uh, a bit of clarity and a bit of texture um, now what is unique about oyster catchers is the red eye I want it to stand out as well as the beak so I will just place it on the eye and on the beak make sure that it's nicely done it's okay to go out a bit because then I'm again pressing alt and just making it go away once again. And here I actually had some default presets that I might leave, maybe not the Hazu one. Oh, I actually liked it. So yeah, that's that. And now just a tiny bit of vignette to place the focus more, more on the car and the oyster catcher. So something like this maybe and a tiny bit of um, graduated filter here. Maybe let's make it more expanded and just show it like this. Uh, and it's another image that will probably... Okay, I just noticed this. This is the thing that I don't want in my picture. It's some weird reflection of the something on the car. Uh, so what I will do is I will again mask this area. And I will take a clarity off of it. For now it may look a bit weird. And I will take the texture off and I will take the sharpness off of this area to, to basically reduce the lines that happened there. And now this image goes again into the Topaz Denoise, my go-to software to uh, denoise my photographs and it's been a game changer for me. So uh, definitely a software I would recommend if you're using, using Lightroom. Uh, it works as a plugin, you set it up as a plugin and it works flawlessly, um, doing really good job of denoising an image. You can obviously play with it a bit, this is even less noisy than the previous one, so I will take the noise off and you can see here it didn't do a great job, so I will add a bit of the noise reduction. and about probably 15 here just it, it was native is great for this particular image so second image done it takes a bit of time for the software to analyze the whole image and denoise it especially if the uh, recorder running but um, this is a before and after again more colors 
just a bit of my uh, more distinguished eye as you can see here the bird looks simply better and a bit of nicer blues colors that's what it's all about and uh, the last image for today because i don't want to make this uh, video horribly long will be this uh, portrait of a puffin i want to go vertical and i will go 4x5 just because that's the instagram crop and i actually really like this crop for uh, birds in uh, vertical frames will go a bit tighter and just a tight portrait of a, of a puffin everybody's favorite you can see the this video to check out the behind the scenes of this image uh, first of all a bit of shadow recovery not too much but just a bit to get the detail back here in the neck um, I will not play around and remove all those white spots on the feathers I just don't see a reason to do that improve a bit of uh, contrast as I a lot of contrast uh, add a bit of clarity and here again we are doing the um, eye trick so selecting just the bright part of the eye clarity at adding a lot and then whites then contrast a bit of exposure and and it's a bit too much so we'll add a bit of more more clarity to balance it out and now we have a pretty um pretty nice i just a bit of less of this and i think it's really looking good um the beak is looking looking pretty sharp that's the 400 to 8 amazing detail so it doesn't need a lot of uh, sharpening so I will just select the white part of the bird and get just a tiny bit of white added here and clarity to um, maybe contrast not that much um, to get the the way that I want the bird to look and just a bit of highlights less because we don't want overexposed pictures um, I will add a bit of luminance to the orange to make a bill and the legs stand out more and then add saturation to them and just a bit of my more luminance to the yellows um i don't i'm not the biggest fan of this bright spot here so i'm using an inverted uh, radial filter here to get rid of it just a tiny bit darker and does that make a good difference or bad one yes i like it better darker and now what I will do here is what I don't always do but it will be um, a vignette but only added only from the one side to make the illusion of the light coming in from that side it was coming in from this side but adding a slight vignette like this uh, makes the image more dynamic and more pleasant to look like look at so there is no need of denoising this particular one so i will just go with before and after again more punch to an image not a huge difference i could probably clone out this poop in a photoshop but i'm not gonna play with that so those are the three images that we post process today i'm actually really happy with all of them so thank you guys for watching if you want to see more of the editing hit me up or leave the, something in the comment that you have a questions maybe about cloning out the poop or something else so thanks for watching 
and don't forget to check out the link to the Topaz product. There is also a 15% discount code for you to use in this video when you decide to buy the product. And that's all for me. Like and subscribe for more materials about wildlife photography. Bye.